All right, so this is going to be a demo on how to finish your color notebook and put it all in one place. But let's also make some variations in what we've already finished, but not make a whole lot of new work. So let me share my screen. So for example, we've got um, in some of our first weeks, we were working with analogous colors. We made a color wheel and there may be others. So if you can open them all at once, that would be great. If you can only open a couple at a time, that's fine too. Um, but what you'll do is you'll make a new folder that won't have anything in it, just call it color notebook final. And in the meantime, uh, see if there's anything that you need to fix up. So maybe in my week one, sometimes I see little extra things. Uh, like there's this strange gray bar that seems to appear down here. Um, I'm gonna get rid of anything like that that I see. Hitting delete. And then I'm gonna resave uh, in this case, this is going to be a uh, color picker. Um, I can either call it purple or maybe magenta, but I'll save it in my color notebook final, saving a copy. I can do a PNG or a JPEG. And so I've got, for example, this one's just how it exists already as purple. And now, uh, and this is fine if it's a quality of 12 in the largest file possible. But now I'm going to go up to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. You can do this a couple ways. Um, the first way, just to make sure that everything's going to correctly stay the same amount of steps is you can click colorize and make sure the saturation's at 100%. And now all of these colors that I can pick from are gonna go from uh, where the hue is adding gray and going to black. If I don't hit colorize, uh, you can see that it kind of keeps all the grays going to black and all of the steps to go straight to black from that fully saturated color. And you can see what happens if you were to put the saturation all the way at 100. But I'm realizing actually, if we're gonna keep those grays, let's keep it at um, its default of zero. But since we're working with things like a limited color range with our um, risograph prints, so if you're using black and another color, you could just find the color that you're going to use. So let's say it's like a, a cyan, color. Um, maybe you would go with something like this. And I'm not exactly sure where cyan is, because this is a very imperfect kind of hue shifting thing. And also, just so you know, it is changing your um, color wheel next to it as well. So these numbers will no longer apply. But I can at least save this as blue. Oops, wrong folder. Saving a copy. I should have another version in here. Don't know why I don't see any other thing. Press OK. Let me check my finder. Oh, looks like I really only have my one in there. I could also just move things over um, if that's easier. And sometimes the way that I do that is um, I'll open a new finder window so that I can just drag and drop. So. I want everything to go to my 
Ah, there's my purple. Moving it over. Analogous colors. Move this over. Maybe I'll open this in Photoshop and change it here. Same thing. Uh, maybe I'll flatten this image first, just to make sure I'm working with the same stuff. And then I'll go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. As I move this hue bar, you can see the analogous colors moving, not necessarily from warm to cool, but you'll see maybe the color range that you want to be using. And all of these colors should also work well for you to pick from. So now this will be green to blue. And I didn't see any strange artifacts on this one, but I might in others. So I'm gonna pause this and return after I've uh, shifted the colors the way I wanted in enough of these files. the recording you've got the warm to cool hues and the cmyk okay. once again flatten image You've got the transparency with browns and uh, the split complement gradients. You might have some of these optional um, transparencies done with the gradients. The tetrad. Oops, one. Uh, for the one that has assimilation, um, I'm sure there's stuff that we could just delete here. So let's get rid of. Some of this stuff because we really only need the part that says uh, color simulation and color proximity. But we can also change how those look. You can even do the one with the color proportion, uh, just make sure it's flattened as well. I'm sure there's information that you don't need that you can delete. Even though this image will change, maybe you like the uh, the colors that kind of the color color proportions and what are next to it, and then you can pick from even this as well. So now you should have all of your files in your color notebook final. I'm just going to name my original one, uh, let's see, one A, and then whatever I want made after it, one B. And then I'll just keep renaming everything so that they'll kind of be a little bit in order when I open them up in Adobe Acrobat.
and I'm basically just uh, clicking it and then hitting enter. And then it lets me rename from there. I think this is everything. And when I open Adobe Acrobat, we're going to create a PDF and hopefully all of the Images are already like 11 by 17 inches, um, but I'm going to hit uh, combine files and I can click and drag. So I think this one's a duplicate. And this will just give me all the stuff that I can now just click around with. Um, if I want to make something that's quick to reference for myself for the next projects, or I might need to make um, different types of color variations. And the one that will probably be the most helpful, I think I forgot, so I'll just add it after, and that would be the Tetrad. So. In order to add images again, you actually need to find where you put your images. So touch right in here. Here's one of them. It looks like I still need to save one as a JPEG, otherwise it won't let me combine them. Save copy, JPEG, and put it into the correct one. And then what I actually have to do is create a PDF from files into a single PDF. And then it's gonna let me append um, these images because it's not gonna let me just drop in images. It only will let me add pages from another PDF. So I believe it's, Purple, yellow, green, blue. Combine. And I've got binder one, binder two. I'll just save this one as Tetrad. The trad PDF. And then binder one, I'll now be able to go to organize pages. And if I know that it came before we did the color simulation, and click here and uh, insert from file. Tetrad, notice everything else is grayed out. And I can do it after the 10th page. And then I'm just going to save this as my final digital color notebook. With variations. <laughs> 